Hello, my name is David Malin, and I'm the instructor for Computer Science E1, Understanding Computers and the Internet at Harvard University's Extension School. You're watching one of our videos of the week. For more such videos or information about this course, visit us on the web at computerscience1.org. Enjoy the show. Hello, my name is Ray Diaz, one of the TAs for Computer Science E1. Welcome to our video of the week on Macro Express. Before we talk about Macro Express for Windows, let's talk a little bit about macros. Macros are essentially a way of combining a number of commands uh, so that you can simplify repetitive tasks. Uh, instead of executing 10 things, you can execute one, which in turn runs steps 1 through 10. There are lots of good examples of this, particularly in a business setting. For example, if your company used uh, long billing codes, you might map those to certain macros to ensure that you don't typo inputting, say, a 25-digit or 30-digit or 35-digit billing code. Certainly, you could create such macros um, using the macroing facility in Microsoft Office, but what if you were working outside of Microsoft Office? The great advantage of using Macro Express is that it works within Windows no matter what application you're running. So here's the default Macro Express window. It's meant to look like Windows Explorer. It's got a similar paradigm between, it, it's like a cross between Windows Explorer and Microsoft Outlook. Um, on the right hand side here, we have a list of the macros in, in, by default included in every Macro Express file. Following up on Dan's example of opening multiple websites using Automator on Mac, let's create a macro that opens up multiple websites. So I'm going to right click in my Macro Explorer area and select New Macro. And the very first thing we're prompted to do is choose a default activation method. Uh, essentially, we have a number of options for this. We can map this macro to a, a hotkey combination, uh, control A, B, whatever. Um, you could also use the Windows key. You can use control Alt K, whatever uh, works for you. Um, you should probably not use common key combinations used by um, other Windows functions like copies, control C probably a bad idea to map your macro to that. But just for the sake of today's demonstration, I'm going to map it to Control-Alt-K, and then I'm going to open the scripting editor. The, so the neat thing about Macro Express is that while you have to learn its way of thinking about commands, you don't have to know very much at all about programming. So to launch a series of websites, I'm going to click on the Internet Command group, I'll scroll down here to Website. And when I double click on it, I'm prompted to what website I want to open. And let's say I like going to Dilbert.com. And it inserts on the right hand side the actual script that is going to open the website Dilbert.com. I can test if this works by clicking on the te Test Run Macro button here in the toolbar. And you can see here that the website Dilbert.com pops up. If you're not the type of person who enjoys figuring out how certain scripting works or creating code behind your macros, you can use the Capture Editor in the Macro Explorer view. It's this camcorder looking icon uh, to capture your mouse movements and keyboard input. So uh, what I've done here by clicking on the Capture button is I'm creating a brand new macro. I'll give it a shortcut key of Control-Alt-K and then click on the Capture Macro button over here on the right-hand side. I'll give my macro a nickname and then click the Start Capture button here in the lower left-hand corner. Now everything I do is going to be captured. Again, I can launch Internet Explorer and go to Dilbert.com. And then when I click on this 
uh, movie looking icon in the system tray, uh, excuse me, when I right click on it, I'm stopping the capture of my screen input. And now I have another macro that essentially does what the first one did w when we edited it through the scripting editor. So he here you've, we've shown you a couple of admittedly overly simple examples of the usefulness of Macro Express, but there are plenty of business uses for this as well. Uh, you can at least get the taste here that Macro Express can be used to automate more complicated functions, certainly a lot more complicated than opening a browser window. In fact, certain places of businesses use Macro Express to assist them with cataloging books in a library, for example. I invite you to visit www.macros.com for more information about this product and also to check out their tutorial. Thanks for watching our video of the week.